Thanks for hopping over here. The Lisa Show went over to the Other Side Academy and interviewed many of the clients and directors at the organization that they lovingly referred to as TOSA. And we were so impressed with the interviews and the people that we met that we didn't want to leave anything out. So we wanted to include more of the interviews here. So this is supplemental information to our original episode that you can go check out on the regular Lisa Show episodes. But this is the extended cut. It might seem a little rough, but it's the interview as it happened right here. I think you're going to really enjoy this interview. It had an impact on me. Let me first introduce you to Joel. Yes. I would love just to ask you a little bit about your story when you first came to the Academy. Specifically, did you have a lot of hope? When I, when I came to the Academy, it was under uh, nine suspended sentences. I was up for a lengthy incarceration. I had completely destroyed my life, living the same cycle of addiction and criminal activity. Um, I was hopeful when I got here. You know, I, I, I felt like I'd gotten stuck in this inescapable cycle of prisons and, and crime and drug addiction. and. I'd known someone who was one of the first women graduates for the Other Side Academy, and she, she had obviously changed, and she's living a happy, fulfilled life, and she'd written me a letter my second day in jail telling me that I needed to go to the Other Side Academy, you know, and I, I thought for that moment, I'm like, wow, I could have something different, you know? So when I wrote and I called Dave, he came and interviewed me on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m., you know, and, and we had the conversation, we had the interview, and from that moment, things started to happen in the court dates and the proceedings. That, that led me to believe that I might get an opportunity to get some help, you know. And when I got here to the Other Side Academy and I sat on the bench, it was actually in the Armstrong Mansion, which is directly the building next door. I'd seen people that I'd served time with. I've seen people that I'd known. I saw people that looked like they were from the same lifestyle that I was, but they also had that bright glimmer of light in their eyes and they were happy, they were engaged, they were communicating, um, they were running the facility. There was just a number of things that, that led me to believe that there was hope and there was something to be had, so, yeah. And then as you had more time in the academy, you actually learned how it works. What were the, some of the stumbling blocks that you had and what were some of your earliest successes? So some of my earliest successes were that, um, you know, I was looking at so much time in prison that I was just gonna follow the rules and I didn't have any questions, hmm. right? Um, one of the most uncomfortable things for me as it relates to the question is that there's a hundred hundred or seventy five people here that cared for me that that wanted to help me that wanted to talk communicate bring me the group and you know that wasn't something that that, that created quite a bit of discomfort for me you know so that was one of my struggles really was, yeah connecting to to people because it's not I didn't come from a life of truth love or connection so to come here to that you know that transition into it and, and understanding it and knowing that it was okay and safe was you know, quite a bit of a challenge. It took me a while. I like to say I didn't talk to anyone or comfortably talk to anybody for about my first year. Really? Yeah, it took a lot of consistency. But what I noticed is that people are walking the same direction that they're talking here, that they're telling me the truth, that they care. So that that's what it took for me. So. Wow. And to have like real connection. So then you're in the program and you decide to stay on as a staff member, as I understand it? I'm not a staff member, not but yet. I am a, Tell, yeah. I am a, so I'm a master student. So yeah. I've, I've since graduated at 30 months. I'm walking into my fourth year as a student in the house who has multiple leadership roles. I'm a barber in the house. That's someone who deals with the consequences and oversees a tribe. I work in legal. So I'll interact with the community. I'll interact with judges, LDAs do over the phone interviews, accept people, deny people, do in-house interviews. And there's a lot of things that, that go on in the facility that I play a part of mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of the student body here, actually all of the student body here, we, we run this facility. So that's why I've stayed is to help someone else. You know, like the, I think back on, the, on that hopeful moment, the person who helped get me here, the person who helped to, to interview me and, and dealt with all the paperwork, like I'd like to provide that opportunity for someone else. So I'm just here to give back to the community because it's one of those things, it's a culture. It's not handwritten, you can't write this stuff down. You know, it's it's overseen, it's it's handed down, it's interactive, yeah. you know. So 
a lot of, uh, I think there's about 30 people who've opted to stay longer, but that's why I've stayed. So I just, I, you know, I know what my life could look like. I could go get a job, a car and do this and that, but mm -hmm. to set that idea aside, to sacrifice that or the thought of it for giving back to a community that saved me from, I think it was like ballpark, like 84 years and, and state correctional facilities. I couldn't even do the math, but you know, that's just gratitude. Yeah. So yeah, I have wow. a couple extra years to give them, you know? Yeah, I do. you're I like, do. Yeah, that's absolutely. Least yep. Yeah, I can tell that you really feel that though yep. for other people that you can be that source of hope. Yep. Take me to that, that moment where you get this letter from someone that you know. Yeah. I mean, what else were you looking at? you know, before you I turned, no, your... I had no other options other than going that was back it. to prison. That was it. I was prison and that was it. I was done, you know, and you know, uh, I remember, so it was a person that was a friend of me, friend of me and, you know, she remembered who I was before, you know, everything started to happen. Yeah. She remembered the kind of person I, she told me about myself and, you know, the truth about the situation, you know, and I just remember thinking, wow, you know, that really, yeah. you know, it's only through that, the, that little, brief glimpse of the truth about who I'd become, right? And yeah. imagine that. So she's like one of the first women graduates, right? She was a woman that like lived a life that was similar to mine. And, you know, she shed that light on, onto me and told me that truth, right? This place instilled that in her, right? To care enough to follow up with someone, to have the courage enough to tell someone the truth, you know, about who they'd become and how they affected the people that cared for them, right? So they, they bred that, they created that here and then they transferred to me. And now that transfers to other people. So it's a big deal. It really is. The other side academy moves mountains. And, you know, like if you think about it statistically, she should have been dead or incarcerated and I should have been dead or incarcerated. Um, some of the people who run this organization, like mathematically, it doesn't, we don't exist. It's, it's just kind of like a miracle, you know, so. Wow. Right. I know that's for the, when you say it like that, when you say like mathematically, we shouldn't exist. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, like. So throw, wow. the, throw the yeah. science behind it away, you know, because like it, it we shouldn't, like, even, even the director of this program, you know, it was, none of this should be going on right now, but, but yet it is, and we're thriving as a community, and there's, they're teaching some of the most broken people in the world, me being one of them, how to care for other people and help other people who found the same dark path that they have, you know, so. And you all understand each other in a way that is so <clears throat> unique because you walked that path before. Yep. I'm wondering how you maintain healthy boundaries within that as you're trying to help people because I'm sure that it gets really personal and that would be a difficult component of all of this. Practice, there's peer support, you know, there's a facility full of people here that have all walked, you know, there's their staff members, there's students. You know, being a barber in the house, I'm, I'm, I often feel like I'm stuck between staff and student because I'm the guy who dishes out the consequences, yeah. right? And then I'm also the guy who, who, who still needs to account for a lot of things, but there's a lot of help, there's a lot of support in that. You know, and, and, and there's a lot of feedback that comes with it. So it's it's not if I get stuck somewhere, that's one thing I've learned to do learn to do here is just ask for help. And that's fulfilling to the relationships mm -hmm. around me because there's some staff members here that have stayed just to help me in that moment, you know, and wow. that that's kinda how it works here. That's so that's wonderful. What is it that you feel the most passionate about all the different components that, that are in this system that absolutely work? What do you feel the most passionate about? The accountability. Right. Yeah. That has the most meaning for you. Yeah. 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 Wow. The relationships that you build within the Other Side Academy. Obviously, as people progress and move on to different situations, different tribes, I'm assuming, yep. or graduate and, and move on, how do you maintain that? Or do you? Or what does that look like? I'm pretty busy <laughs> most days. You know, I, I get up in the morning and the conversations start. Um, you know, I'm one of the first people on the floor. I'm one of the last people off the floor. So, um, you know, there's opportunities around here through the things that we do. So I, I was given an opportunity to be a freshman crew boss. That's one of the guys who helps some of these guys, the early mm -hmm. candidates find their way and help them navigate some of the smaller things in the beginning of the process. And, you know, being involved with the tribe like I do, there's just, I'm constantly doing something, but that's, that's what, uh, that's what I signed up for. You know, I've, I've, I've been an influence, whether it be for good or bad, you know, and you know, for so many years, I influenced so many people to do bad and there's so many negative tolls that I've taken on someone's life. So today I get to balance the skills and make that right through doing positive and influencing for the good. Right. So like the balancing of the skills too, that's another reason why I stayed as, as long as I have, you know, it's like, there's part of me 
that, that finds fulfillment in that, 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 that gets to feel right at the end of the day because I've gone and I've, I've helped someone else. And, you know, that, that's, it is very time consuming. But yeah. That's all right. That's okay. That's what we signed up for. I love it. Yep. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. You sharing your story. I one question. Yeah. I just want to know, because you're, you're talking about you work with so many people who are at the very beginning. What do you see now about this transformation, about this process that you couldn't see while you were in it yourself? It seemed really small and monotonous. I didn't understand it. But when I look at the bigger picture, um, the very channel of like passing information and pull-ups and being accountable is the fiber of a healthy relationship. It's the fabric of any healthy interaction, right? And then, and then it's like this, the old bait and switch, you know, pull up, pass, play groups. You know, you, you hold boundaries. Um, you're met with a little bit of conflict. You, you learn to navigate relationships and how to have the conversations, right? So it's, it seems really small and slow and, and, and monotonous at first, but and then, you know, one day it, and, and, I, and I mean, 18 months later, it, it dawns on you like, oh, wow, you know, they're, they're really, uh, yeah. yeah, this works. This works. <laughs> yeah, it does. You know, so the realization is you don't just walk in here, you know, it's an intense program, but you don't walk in here and have the answer right away. That's the, that's the trick, right? So. And now here is Clay from the Other Side Academy. So thank you for being able to share your story. I'm wondering if you will would um, tell us a little bit about you and your story, how you came to be here, and what your relationship with Hope was when you walked through the door. What my relationship with Hope was? Yeah, like did you have any? No, I'd kind of lost all hope. I'd been to multiple programs. I'd done a lot of time in jail, um, and I didn't always think that it was going to turn out like that. So, you know, I, I grew up in kind of a middle class to lower class family, and... Uh, I never had religion or anything in in my life uh, that was instilled in my life at a young age. But, you know, towards the end, um, I I started to realize that I did have a spiritual side and I'll get to that. But, um, you know, I I got really good grades. I played sports and I excelled in sports. I excelled in school. I got voted loudest personality in high school. I got voted most likely to succeed. I was on the student body uh, for the Murray Spartans. So... Um, and it's kind of crazy how things work out because um, as long as I was doing what my teachers and my parents and my authority figures wanted me to do, I could be this kind of uh, deviant monster on the side, right? Mm. And uh, eventually the, the <clears throat> people started to figure that out. They started to realize that I do have a drug problem. Um, and that kind of came out of the bag after I went to culinary school in Las Vegas. I graduated from culinary school in Las Vegas. Um, when I got back from culinary school, uh, 2009 was a really rough year for me in my life. Um, my parents divorced after about 25 years. I, I got two DUIs in a month, and then I, I found two of my friends dead from heroin overdoses. And uh, at the time, I thought that that would be like the catalyst for change and to mm -hmm. get my life together in the eye-opening experience, but um, I used that as kind of fuel to be a victim. And uh, for the next 10 years, I spiraled out of control. Um, I was in and out of jail probably about 30 times uh, for a bunch of different things, you know, drugs and guns and possession, theft, burglary, all sorts of stuff. And I couldn't quite get it right. I tried programs in jail. Uh, I tried outpatient programs. I tried inpatient programs, 30, 60, 90 day programs, and I just couldn't figure it out. And I, when we talk about hope, I, I had lost all hope in that moment thinking that, you know, I'm, here I am about to go to this two-year program, but I don't know if there's any hope for me. You know, it was kind of a lost cause. Um, and uh, so I'm out on the Indian Reservation right before coming here. Uh, I'm living in a motorhome with no running water and no heat. Uh, I racked up a string of burglaries, and I was looking at doing upwards of 20 years in prison. And uh, I remember uh, my, pa my parents were calling me. They're like, dude, the cops are looking for you. They're at my house. My friends are calling me. They're like, hey, the cops are at my house. Like, you're screwed. And uh, <clears throat> I remember looking up at the sky. And uh, it was like everything was in slow motion. But I remember looking up at the sky and I said, if there's a God, show me. And uh, didn't quite happen as quick as I would like. But four hours later, I end up in the back of a cop car. And I'm like cursing um, that there wasn't a God at that time, right? And, and uh Little did I know that that was like my God shot at the time. As I started to thaw out and get my bearings about me, um, I had enough time to sit and wait while I was fighting my case in, in uh, Duchesne County Jail. And uh, 
I realized that that was my God shot. And I, and I started to try and really get in tune with spirituality. And I charted, started to try and figure out, um, you know, try and find this side that I've been missing. Um, and so I started going to like LDS 12 step uh, inside the jail. And uh, I met this couple and I told them, I was like, look, I really want to get help. I want to go to a program. They're like, we know this place. It just opened in Salt Lake. It's, it's called Victory Outreach. And so we talked the judge into letting me go to Victory Outreach and uh, suspending the sentence that I had over my head. So if I ran from Victory Outreach, the judge was going to hang me up to dry, right? And uh, I get to Victory Outreach and it was like unlike anything I'd ever experienced. So it's like Bible study. It's like all day, you know, church kind of like, and I, it, it was like foreign to me. And I remember like the first hour we'd wake up and it'd be like really early in the morning. They put on music. People would be talking in tongues and stuff like that. And, and uh, I was just praying. I had no idea how to even pray. And I'm just praying. I'm like, I just want to be successful. I just want to be successful. Whatever that looks like, please just use me as a vessel. I just want to be successful. And at the time, my idea of success was like money, cars, clothes, you know, things, right? And uh, what's crazy is I was at the, that Victory Outreach for about 30 days. And... Um, and uh, the Salt Lake Police Department came in and they shut it down because they didn't have proper licensing. There was like nine of us living in a garage, right? It was crazy. It was like, it was like the craziest things going on. So, and so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. If I do not get into a, a program, I'm going to prison for a long time. And so I tried to do the easy route, try to go 30, 60, 90, 30, 60, 90. I'm applying to places. I don't have insurance. I don't have money. Um, and then I hear about the Other Side Academy. Um, it's the day after Christmas. Uh, 2017 and I waited out the holidays and I you know I made that commitment that I was going to come to the other side Academy um, but I didn't think that they'd be open because of the holidays and whatnot so I wait out the holidays I get here on Christmas uh, the day after Christmas and uh, it was the best decision I've ever been able to make for myself um, you know I always wanted success and uh, today I have it but it's a completely different idea than what I had with success it, you know success is the way you feel on the inside, uh, the people you have around you, um, the people that call me on my crap and aren't scared to, um, the relationships, uh, just the life that I've built for myself is successful today. And you know, getting to help other people here at the Other Side Academy, that's my new drug. That's what I get high on today is helping others. So, did you feel that immediately when you came through these doors, or how long did it take you? Oh, <laughs> I'm gosh. not seeing a nodding of the head like, no, he did not. Um, well, Jared, spoiler. Jared only hears story. Jared, I'm like, I'm five, four years ahead of Jared in the process. I'm wondering but... if there's a moment where you realized, oh, this is working. This is who I am now. Uh, did you have an aha moment? I had lots of aha moments, but a lot of my aha moments came before I was ever even committed to like wanting to do this. So, um, my first real big aha moment was when my parents came at a year and everybody around me had been telling me like, Hey, you're changing, you're changing, you're, you're getting, di you're different. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, whatever, you know? And, uh, my parents came and it was a really cool experience because the looks on their faces, mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. And, uh, just the way that they like, it was like almost like grabbing my cheeks and like, what have you done with my son? Um, and I get emotional because I lost my dad while I, while I was here. But uh, it's just been like the, it's what's driven me to be able to be who I am today is like the thought of letting them down outweighs everything else, you know? And uh, when I got to say goodbye to my dad, uh, right before he passed away, um, I just remember going there and I was like, look, I'm not going to, like say sorry I'm not gonna like promise you anything but I will tell you this that you don't have to worry anymore and that um, I'll be the, the person that you always raised me to be and uh, I've been able to fulfill that commitment and here I am <laughs> so sorry I didn't plan on crying with you guys dude don't ever so. apologize I cry every day <laughs> <laughs> I love that I love that you shared that and that you were able to say that to your dad. Yeah. But I've had a lot, a lot of aha moments yeah. just to go back on that. Yeah. Uh, my first year, I hated it here. I hated change. I just hated change. Uh, everything yeah. that the Other Side Academy teaches you to be was completely opposite of the lifestyle that I bought into. Mm -hmm. The lies mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the false sense of loyalty and love and respect that I had chased and the acceptance that I had chased. You know, I... Um, I, uh, 
I didn't like all the rules. I didn't like all the structure. You know, I think the reason why I chose to be homeless uh, was because it was like this false sense of freedom. Um, I, I wanted to do whatever I wanted to do, however I wanted to do it with no responsibility and not having to answer to anybody. And being out there doing whatever I wanted to do allowed me that opportunity, right? And I think sometimes, you know, homelessness is a choice because of that false sense of freedom. And for me, that's what it was. It's like, I didn't want to have any responsibility. It was like my own rules, my own game. I could do whatever I wanted to do. So when did that change for you? Well, it was either two years or 20. That was kind of a a no-brainer decision for me, right? Uh, You could go to the Other Side Academy for two years or you can go to prison for 20. And I was deathly afraid of going to prison. Uh, I had never been, but I just know the type of person that I would have became, you know? Um, So... Uh, about like 15, 16 months in, I started to realize that I was making changes. And by that time, it was a two-year program, so I only had eight months left. And so I gave everything I had for the last eight months mm-hmm. into the Other Side Academy, and I really started to feel like I was, you know, living up to what they're trying to teach me. I mm-hmm. felt like I looked in the mirror, and I, I finally felt like I was, you know, that I liked what was looking back. Yeah. And uh, starting to have integrity. I was starting to have boundaries. I was starting to be honest which was all foreign to me but it felt good at the same time and then by this time I got my first taste of being able to help other people because that's where I was at in in my program or at the other side I hate calling it a program but at the other side academy Um, and so once it once I started helping people and being able to just help them see things differently and just relating Mm -hmm. because of all of my previous struggles in that first year man that was like the catapult for me is that why you have stayed on Uh, so that eight, that last eight months was like, wow, I've really made some serious changes because I was trying at that time. I surrendered um, and I put everything I had into that last eight months. And so I, I signed up for a third year. Deep in my belly, I knew I needed to stay as much as I didn't want to because I still wanted to chase cars and clothes and things. Um, and I had already made a two-year investment into my life. Why screw that up? Why throw that away? I decided to stick around for a third year, and um, in that third year, I gained more responsibilities, but more so than anything, I got more out of that third year than I did the first two, and it was wild. I got addicted to change. I got addicted to helping other people. I got addicted to figuring out who I was. For once in my life, like I could just be who I wanted to become here at the Other Side Academy, and there was no judgment. Uh, They didn't want what was in my pocket, like most of the people in my past life, right? Mm -hmm. It was just me. And for me, just having that reset for long enough to be away from the people, the places, the playgrounds, to realize my true worth was everything that I needed. And so, you know, at the end of my third year, I really, really thought I made some changes. So I was like, you know what, I'm signing up for a fourth year. Plus at the time, the statistic, and I think it's still, the, the, the number is still the same, but 92% of the people uh, that succeed uh, or 92, uh, people that stay a fourth year or longer have a 92% success rate. Oh, okay. Wow. So. Wow. It was a no-brainer. You're I'm like, already invested. My odds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. so close. Exactly. Why don't you like to call it a program? Uh, because the Other Side Academy is a way of life. All our beliefs that we try to instill into people, it's not just some literature that we hang on the wall for people to read. It's actually who we want you to become. And for me, those beliefs is everything that I do on a daily basis. Learn how to tell the truth, hold myself accountable, hold people accountable around me, having boundaries, being faith friendly, right? Mm -hmm. Respecting the faith of other people, Um, you know, working hard. Um, You alone can do it, but you can't do it alone. There's still people in my corner that call me on my crap every day and I love it. You know what I mean? Uh, I think embracing humility and being able to take feedback. You're not going to be able to grow if you can't receive feedback. We have, you know, self-reliance. There's no free lunch. Every day I wake up and I come to work with a smile on my face and I love what I do. And I work to be able to, you know, get myself out of the debt that I've created with the court system. But that's okay, too. I feel yeah. great about it. Okay, good. <laughs> so every day I'm, I'm practicing all of those beliefs. And yeah. that's what we're just trying to teach people how to do. I, you know, um, I think there's a lot of parallels between the, the Other Side Academy's 12 beliefs and the Ten Commandments. And it's just teaching people how to be good people. 
That's it. Oh, I love that. Go ahead. Okay, if you mind, I'll jump in here. I'm McKay again. Yeah. And you can answer this to Lisa because you have okay. to on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm curious. You talked about, like, making changes, helping other people. I'm curious what that looks like on, like, a day-to-day basis. Like, because those are big things that I would love to do those better, you know? What does that look like for you when you wake up in the morning and you say, I want to help other people? What are you doing? Yeah, so, I mean, it's an array of things. First and foremost, I'm an example. So um, I'm going to conduct myself and I'm going to move in a way that inspires other others to move in that direction, right? A lot of times it's not what you say, it's what you do, and that's what people follow. Um, so I try to just be a good example in that, in that way. Um, but, you know, Change at the Other Side Academy comes in many different forms. Uh, you know, it comes in one-on-ones. So they could talk about what they're struggling with. I could give them feedback. And, and, you know, sometimes it comes in a way of a haircut where, you know, if they're acting out and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, it can get a little loud. It could get a little brash. Um, and it's, you know, in our eyes, tough love. Um, we're not going to tell you the truth because um, truth heals and secrets kill. That's the motto at the Other Side Academy, right? So we have groups. We have group settings, too, where you're getting... Um, you're getting called on your behavior in a group setting. I'm sure you guys got to experience that just a minute ago, right? So um, the groups are a huge portion of that. You have one-on-ones, you have talks with staff members. And and I think it's like, there's a sculpture out there called The Student. If you guys get a chance, check it out on your way out. But uh, it's just like this unfinished block sculpture. And part of it, you can see kind of a student coming out of it. But in my eyes, that's how everybody gets here. It's like this kind of unfinished product. And as you go through the process of the Other Side Academy, through those one-on-ones, through groups, through haircuts, through pull-ups, through having boundaries and all the things that struggle and, and make you uncomfortable, you start to chisel at that raw stone and you start to really become the person that you were made to become, the 2.0 version of yourself. Throughout this experience, what are you most excited about today about like your own personal change or hopeful for it like are you hopeful for the future or something in yourself that you see is changing or for a different goal yeah I think uh, for me I always have to remember that I'm a student Mm -hmm. Um, I never can think that I've arrived Um, I got to continue to make right choice after right choice after right choice because I'm ultimately one bad decision away from the person I became right no matter how far along I get into the process of sobriety and clean and sober. Um, you know, I'm about to get married to the love of my life, and which is super cool. Yeah, thank you. I get married next year, and I met her here at the Other Side Academy. It doesn't always work out that way, so don't say, get any ideas. Allowed? No, not allowed. It was a very <laughs> rocky, rocky road, but we stuck it out, and we did what, what, what we were asked to do. I've seen a lot of people compromise and leave mm-hmm. due to chasing a relationship when they know nothing about that person. And, you know, I did everything I trusted in, in the leadership team of the Other Side Academy and did everything that they asked me to do. And today we did it right and we're together. And I have two cats. I do sober hip hop. I just got my songs done today. So uh, I have nice. a segment coming out on KRCL where it's going to be on KRCL. But those are just some things that I, that I like and I look forward to. But I think for, you know, I don't plan on ever leaving the Other Side Academy. I'll be here for the rest of my life because um, I still have a lot of skills to balance, right? And forgiveness is tough, but I think forgiveness for me is just, you know, helping more people than I hurt, and I still have a lot of work to do. Wow, that's very impactful. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. I really appreciate that. You said something that caught my attention. You were talking about chasing false love and false acceptance. And I'm wondering if you could just... Did I say that? Yeah, you did. You're so profound. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was profound. It got me thinking like, whoa. Yeah, like how many of us are still doing that? that? What does that mean to you? And like, to you, what is love? What is acceptance? And what's the difference between... Well, I think what I said in that moment was that I had this false sense of freedom, Mm -hmm. right? And everything that I bought into, I gave my loyalty to the cause that I thought would give me loyalty back. I gave my love to the place, to like the people and the places that I thought would give it back. I gave all these things for the, you know, for 17 years of my life and my chaos, destruction, drugs, criminality. I gave all that to the wrong cause. And in turn, it left me empty and it left me hopeless and it left me broken. And, you know, I had nothing to lose and everything to gain when I came to the Other Side Academy. And I tried to give that same amount of effort that I gave out there when I got here. And it's paid dividends that I never could have got 
out there, right? Running around in those circles and running around with the people that I was doing the things that I was doing with, I would have never got to where I'm at. I would have, they weren't going to give me no 401k or the relationships I have or, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah, radical so, honesty or, yeah. Exactly. I could, I mean, I can list a whole bunch of things. The 401k is like just a funny joke. But. <laughs> right. No, I guess. <laughs> They're not invested in your future. There's no 401k yeah, in I'm the hood. Not, you no. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're 65 and you come to collect. There's nothing. To exactly. There's not gonna yeah, you're burnt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and you know what's crazy too is like, we took this financial class and I, I had no idea like a financial literacy class that they taught us. And it's like all these things that I wish I would have learned when I was like 18 years old about how to build credit and buy a car and buy a house. And then I always thought that it was just street cred, you know what I mean? But I didn't know there was a such thing as a credit score. I was like, dude, this is crazy. So it's like all the things like I shunned myself from learning. And like I said, I just needed a big enough gap away from all of the crap, all the negativity to realize like I was worth so much more, but I sold myself short. When all you know is negativity, that's all you're going to get. Yeah. So thanks. Sorry if that, I don't know if that answers oh, that it. Was there. Perfect. So that's a great really answer. The, the crazy part is like everybody knows somebody either directly mm -hmm. or indirectly. Oh, it's everyone. like struggling every, nowadays. Every it's like the cra people. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. I think this is an important issue of our day that we think somebody's got to have, you know, to have uh, the answer to know how to help and, and to give stories of hope of somebody who says, I didn't want to do it. I did it. I have hope. I didn't think it, you know, it is, is so encouraging to the hopeless. Mm. And I feel like that kind of can, it can heal families. It changes lives. Yeah. I just hope it comes through. You know, sometimes it's hard to articulate it yeah. in, in a way where it's like, it, it touches people it's like i just wish that i could like show you you know uh -huh. what i mean uh -huh. and then because well, it's crazy like i'm having this aha moment as we talk about yeah. i'm on a podcast for doing good and i'm thinking about my life like yeah. 10 years ago no, seriously. and you guys wouldn't even want to been in the same room with but it's me it's powerful and so i'm thinking who knows who's going to listen to this podcast yeah. but i feel like god knows and so whoever needs to hear it who it might do some good and that's worth it for me yeah. mm -hmm. you know Can for sure one more question just yeah. before we go what's the difference between your experience here and the experience at all those other programs that you went to that didn't work yeah that's a great question uh, for one, I think the, the biggest thing, like I said, the length of the other side Academy and being able mm -hmm. to stay until you feel ready, right? All the other programs that I went to, it's like when the money's run out or the funding's run out or mommy and daddy can't pay for you anymore. Yeah, it's quite expensive. Then you gotta go. If you can't mortgage your house again for the umpteenth time, sorry, you gotta go. But it's crazy because if I went to the doctor and I had cancer, you know, and, and I have stage four cancer, but they say they can cure it, they're gonna ask me, okay, how much money do you have? And I give them the money that I have, they only give me the treatment for the money that I have. But my, my cancer's not cured, yeah. right? And so it's like, at the other side academy we save lives by letting people stay until they feel ready a guy like me with 17 years of chaos criminality destruction bad behavior 30 60 90 days wasn't the answer for me i needed something long hard consistent in your face colorful all the above right um and there was no lab coats there's no doctors there's no therapists it was all people who had one day one time or another walked the life that i had before me and it made it relatable. I think relatability is huge um, to know that they're calling me on my crap, but they've been exactly where I'm at. Like, and that's why they can call you on it because they've tried it themselves. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's yeah, cool. Be... Thanks. Thank you for listening to our interviews. At The Lisa Show, we always want to give you more than you paid for, which is nothing. So this is all more. Just kidding. <laughs> but we love this information and we hope you like it too.